Have you ever had somebody tell you, you gotta do, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do that? When you're a kid, I bet when you were growing up, you know, you had all kinds of people telling you what you gotta do. You know, your mom, your dad, who knows, maybe someone else, you know, maybe an aunt or an uncle, maybe a friend or a relative. But there's always somebody that somewhere is going to be around you that's going to tell you what you got to do. Because there's always somebody that's going to tell you something, somewhere, at some place in time, that you got to do what they want you to do. And isn't that really what a got to do is? Isn't a got to do got to do something about what someone else is telling you what they want you to do? That's the way I've always figured out that got to do's are about. Because the gotta do is always about what someone wants you to do. It's not like you gotta. It's like you should. Or you could. Or maybe you might. Or maybe you won't. That's kind of why I call them gotta's. You know, it's like, gotta do this, gotta do that, gotta go here, gotta go there. Gotta go somewhere, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind of the way I look at gotta's. You know, it's not like you have to. It's not like it's going to, you know, be the worst possible thing that could happen, but sometimes people, when they're giving you gotas, are always trying to tell you something that really you don't want to hear. That's kind of why I don't really pay much attention when someone tells me you got to do it. Because as soon, as soon as someone says I got to do something, I'm going to say, uh uh. <laughs> I don't gotta. I get to choose. I get to decide if I want to do a gotta or not. Most of the time, I don't want to do what someone tells me I gotta do. As a matter of fact, if you're like me, most of the time you don't want to hear what someone tells you you gotta do. You'd rather hear what someone tells you you might want to do. If you're like me, you prefer to find out what you could do, and then you choose to do what you want to do. And I personally, you know, I kind of like to do what I enjoy. Now, I'll admit, that's not always the best rule of thumb for me. Because sometimes I enjoy some things that aren't good for me. Sometimes I do some things that really aren't the smartest thing in the world to do. Sometimes, you know, I act brainless. Sometimes I act smartless. Sometimes I act pretty stupid. And you know what? Stupid is as stupid does. And so when I act stupid, I am stupid. I admit it. But you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. That's kind of what happens sometimes when I do things that seem like a good idea at the time. Now, those things that I do that seem like a good idea at the time, I don't tell anyone they got to do it. Matter of fact, nine times out of ten, I tell them that I don't want to do it. That's why I mix up those gotas with shoulds. Sometimes a should is a could as opposed to a gotta. I kind of like making the difference, you know. I kind of like seeing things from a different perspective. I like to look at it from two points of view. Or maybe three points of view, or maybe someone else's point of view, because, you know, I'm not the smartest kid on the block, and I'm not the dumbest kid on the block. Matter of fact, sometimes I'm the only kid on the block. <laughs> but what I do is I like to examine it. I like to think about it. I like to kind of go, hmm, maybe. And so when someone tells me I've got to do something, I might think about it for a while. I might consider it, I might pay attention to it, but i got to think about it. So, maybe that's my rule of thumb. Instead of, like, telling people what i got to do, I like to tell people what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about it. I'm going to take the time to maybe pray about it. Yeah, you know, that kind of spiritual word about, it. you know, saying that you're going to do something you really don't do. At least that's what most people I meet do. They tell me or they'll say they're going to pray about something or they're going to do something. And usually, most of the ones that I meet, they ain't going to do it. <laughs> I don't talk a good story. They'll tell me, oh, I need to pray about it. And I was like, okay, so you're not going to do it, are you? <laughs> and that's usually the rule of thumb. Most of the people I meet, they tell me they're going to pray about it. No, they're not. But you see, people that pray about it, pray about it. Matter of fact, most of the people I meet that pray about it, they'll stop right there and pray about it. Doesn't that make more sense? Kind of like, you know, gotta do's. 
people that do it, do it. People that don't, don't. So whenever someone tells me they're going to pray about it, I kind of look at them like, do you want to pray? Let's pray. You don't want to pray? Let's don't pray. But let's don't say what we're not going to do. That's kind of what those gotta do's remind me of. They remind me of people saying what I gotta do, what they're not going to do. Because they're always going to tell me what I should do, but I don't see them doing it. So that's kind of where I get a little mixed up with kind of like what people got to do. I've heard got to do's all my life. I've heard people say, well, you know, hey, you got to obey the speed limit. And then I see someone break the speed limit and get away with it. Or, you know, you got to do this. And, you know, you see someone saying you got to do it. And then you turn around and you watch them and guess what? They're not doing what they said I got to do. Because most of the time when someone's telling you they got to do it, it's because they want you to do it, but they're not willing to do it themselves. So that's kind of why gotas are always interesting to me. I just don't really pay much attention to those gotas. I'd rather see what someone is doing as opposed to what someone says they got to do. Because what I see is what I believe in sometimes. What I realize are the things that I've thought about talked about maybe with God and then seeing how it works out because something that I see working out is something that I know works and then becomes truth for me because I thought about it I talked about it I considered it I prayed about it then I went and tried it and then when I tried it I liked it now when I try it and I like it that means that I've spent the time I've invested the time I've got out of my way to prove that something is true. Now, when a person tells me I gotta do something or else, I listen to the or else. The or else is where I'm a little concerned. What does or else mean? Does that mean kind of like cause and effect? Like if I do this, I get this? You know, like if I pick up a candy bar and if I walk out the door, I'm gonna get busted. <laughs> That's cause and effect. That's like, uh uh, I don't wanna do that. But if I pick up a candy bar, and if I take some money, and I pay for it, hey, that means I purchased it. That means that candy bar is mine. That means I get to eat it. I get to enjoy it. It's mine. I don't have to worry about someone taking it away from me. I paid for it. It's something that I possess. You know, some people call that salvation, too. They say that Jesus came and paid for us. He took care of some of the things that, you know, he said, that God had said about us. God had told us we got to do something about the state we're in. we got to fix up, clean up, and get right, or we're going to get left. we got to make ourselves better because we're not ready to be in heaven. We're so messed up that we're screwed up, and we're so screwed up, we're messed up. We don't even know which way is up. Wow. That was kind of blunt, wasn't it? Gee, thanks, God. You're telling me what I got to do. And now you're telling me I can't do it? I don't get it. And that's kind of the problem, was that most people didn't get it when Jesus said it. What can I say? Today, the same thing is true. They just don't get it, but they could have it. All they got to do is do what he said. You know, it's like going in the candy store. Do you want candy? Hey, okay. Then if you go in the store, the store is selling candy. Because I'm going in the store, that means I want to see the candy. Because I'm in the store, I want to purchase something because stores sell things. I'm not going in the store to play video games. If I want a video game, I go to a video game store. If I'm going into a candy store, I want candy. I don't go into a candy store in order to buy a car. Just doesn't work that way. I don't go into a candy store in order to buy cigarettes. Although I imagine there's some candy stores that sell cigarettes. Matter of fact, if I want candy and someone tries to sell me a cigarette, it don't taste the same. Matter of fact, ew, it don't even act the same. When I go into a candy store, I want candy. You know, M&M's. I know what an M&M tastes like. 
I know it's like, mm, mm, good. Oh, well, maybe that's a different commercial. But when I go into a candy store, that's what I want. And that's kind of what God came and said when you got to do something. He said, look, you got to do this in order to get here. If you want to be here, you got to do this. You know, it's like, you want to be in heaven? You got to do what heaven says. If you don't, you ain't. You won't. And you can't be here. So you got to do. You're going into heaven, the candy store, to get candy. If you're going into heaven, you got to get salvation. You know, and salvation is what God said is in heaven. You only get in here if you got it. If you don't got it, you don't get it. Guess what? If I ain't got no money and I go in the candy store, I'm not walking out with candy. <laughs> I'll get arrested and then I'll get thrown in jail. You try to get into heaven without salvation and guess what? You ain't getting there. You're going to be thrown in jail and you're going to pay. Might be a long time in jail. You might, uh, <laughs> dare I say, be there in eternity. You know what I'm saying there. So it's kind of like, you know, this whole list of gottas went all the way down to what you should have or what you could have. Because if you could have, you should have paid for that candy bar before trying to walk out the door without it. And that's kind of like what, you know, getting into heaven is like. You know, there are a lot of people that tell you what you got to do in order to get there. And that sounds good. You know, like somebody will say, you know, like I'll be out on the street and somebody say, well, you, you got to run faster when you grab that candy bar. Because if you run fast enough and you take a whole bunch of people with you, you can get away with it. Okay. So you try it and you do. <gasps> I got away with it. I got my candy bar. <laughs> and you eat it and you go, hmm, that was good. I think I'll try that again. And then the next time you get caught. Oh, that didn't work. Duh. A certain amount of common sense, you know, you got to have, in other words. So whenever you're listening to people about gotta do's and wanna do's and could do's and do do's, you know, maybe they didn't do what it is that they're telling you you got to do because God is the one who said what you got to do and God is the one who said what you could do and God has said what you should do. So I think if I'm going for salvation, I'm going to stick with what, what God said that I got to do and what I could do and what I should do. And I think I'll take, you know, maybe what he's given me so that I could buy the candy. Salvation. Do you get it? Does it make sense? Kind of like, you know, kind of like fits in a little way of thinking. Because that's kind of what usually happens is that, you know, you kind of like look at things from a different point of view. You kind of got to think about it for a while. Kind of let it sink in, you know. It's like, Somebody will tell me what I can do, you know, with what I could do, which is like, you know, maybe I could get a gun. You know, like people always talk about buying a gun. I'm like, oh, really? What can I do with a gun? Well, I can protect myself. I can use it and I can abuse it. Cool. Let me go get a gun so I could go get candy. I don't think so. So, you know, I really don't know that I want to go with what people say they know. I want to go with somebody who thinks he knows what he's talking about because he is about building candy stores, selling candy, providing candy. I like candy. I want candy. You know, within reason. And I like my salvation, and within reason, my salvation is good. But it's not a whole lot of what I did, but it's a lot of what God did. And so when I went out and I saw the candy man, you know, kind of passing out this candy, you know, I saw what happened when some of the people ate that candy. It was laced. It wasn't the candy man that provided. I should have went to where I could buy and I knew what I got to do because someone told me about the candy man. And out there, you're going to find there are a lot of candy men selling you all kinds of things, giving it to you, telling you about it, saying what they think is good for you. But guess what? It might be laced with something. Be careful. Because I'd rather stick with something that I got to do from who I know knows what he's talking about because he built the store, because he sells the goods, because he's the one who provided not just the candy, but salvation. So looking at that, I'm kind of thinking that on the streets, you know, you got to watch your street lingo a little bit because <laughs> it gets a little confusing, you know. So I'd rather go someplace that's got some heavenly lingo that kind of tells me more about what I got to do what I could do, what I should do, and what I would do because it makes it so much easier for me than paying the price that I can't afford by giving me the opportunity to pay for what I can afford and getting the candy that I want so that I can be where I want to go. 
Thou hast girded me with strength unto battle. When I am weak, then I am strong. Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it's nothing with you to help. Whether with many or whether with them that have no power at all and no money. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let no man prevail against you. Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. It is better to trust in the Lord than put trust in streets. It is better to trust in the Lord. Hey, I think I'll trust in the Lord, man. They seem to know what they're talking about. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. And a horse is a thing for safety. And a horse is a vain thing for safety. I mean, a horse is a horse, of course, of course. And no one can talk to a horse, of course. And it is, of course, unless the horse is famous, Mr. Ed. Did he talk? Think about that. There is no king saved by the multitude, and a mighty man is not delivered by much strength. The horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Wow. You know, if I got to trust in something, I don't know if I'm going to trust in the Ganas. I don't know if I'm going to trust in the Gunas. I don't know if I'm going to trust in the Shudas. I don't know if I'm going to trust in the Kudas. Maybe I'm going to cry out and say, Hey God, you know, I've been to the candy store. I've seen how much it costs. I've seen what i got to pay. You think maybe you could like buy it for me? Could you take care of it for me? Could you provide you know, the money so that I can buy the candy? So I could get the candy? So I could enjoy the candy? Hey God, since you're the one who said, I need all this for salvation, could you not provide salvation for me? Could you not give me salvation? Could you not take care of it for me? Could you not give me everything I need for salvation? And you know what? Jesus said, yeah, I can. As a matter of fact, I have. It's not much you need to do. As a matter of fact, whosoever believeth of thee, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Because it's not just that God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, or could not perish, but that there's a little more to it, isn't there? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like you got to ask. So God, could you give me the candy? Could you take care of providing for the candy for me? Could you pay the price for my candy so that I could eat it and enjoy it? And, matter of fact, have a bag full of it so that I'm never worried about if I run out of candy? Maybe. Just maybe, God will answer. Maybe instead of gotta, maybe we could, and maybe we should, ask him.